Thank you. Thank you. I'm so honored to be here. Oh, it's a great honor to have you, Don. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank and you. what a night this has been tonight. Oh, it's just been, I've felt the spirit moving in this place. And I, I think the table is just set for many souls being born in the kingdom of God. We want to try to get up a load for heaven, you Come know. Heaven's right. real, but let's take some folks with us. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Don, uh, uh, everybody's interested. We want to know a little bit about about you and what led up to this this incredible moment uh, that you had well you know I was a pastor when this happened and uh, we've heard these uh, incredible amazing testimonies tonight that have touched me very deeply I, I was just moved beyond words uh, by the story of what has happened in the lives of folks who have been here and now they're here and I, I think that's a real testimony I think you can uh, that's what God is he's in the business of reconstructing lives yeah. I was actually a pastor when this happened I was on my way to church when it happened I was uh, I had been attended a pastor's conference and was going back to my church on a Wednesday to lead the Wednesday night service at my church and in a, on a rural highway in the middle of nowhere about 90 miles from my church um, on a bridge an 18-wheeler crossed the center stripe uh, without any warning at all and hit me head-on mm. and uh, he was driving a big truck I was driving a Ford Escort that's those that's not good odds and uh, mm. he just rolled over me because I, I had nowhere to go I was on a bridge he crushed my car with me in it shoved it up against the railing of the bridge struck a couple of more cars and so it was a massive accident on this bridge uh, good news no one else was injured uh, the people in the other cars were not injured the truck driver was not injured but I was killed instantly as a result of the accident dead on the scene four different sets of emergency medical technicians examined me it was raining that day. The windows were all knocked out of the car. So I was literally, literally covered up with a tarp and mm. left for the coroner to come and take the body away. So I lay there, uh, a dead body, an incredibly broken and uh, dismembered body in a car waiting for the coroner to come. And the mm. moment me, I was absent from the body and present with the Lord. Whew. Um, heaven is real. Mm. Heaven is real. I have preached it so many times, and then I find myself there immediately at the age of 38. Other uh, brother was talking about what happened in 38. I was 38 years old. I was on my way to church when the truck hit me. And I think that's important to know. I think we, we sometimes think that we have to be in the wrong place doing the wrong thing for death to come. No, it can come at any time. Mm. You, can, you have to be ready now. Mm. It's an urgent thing. It's an urgent thing. So I was on my way to church, and this big truck hit me and killed me, and I was standing at the very gates of heaven, uh, really not very much aware of what was going back down on earth. Uh, and back down on earth, a lot of things were going on. They called my church to let them know that I'd been in an awful accident, but they didn't tell them I was dead because they try to avoid that on the phone if they can help telling it. And uh, a pastor who was in the traffic behind me walked up on the bridge and asked if he could be any, any assistance. And... Um, they said, no, there's no one here to pray for. Everyone else has been taken away. They're fine. And the man in the red car is dead. When he said that, God spoke to the preacher. His name was Dick Onorecker. And God said, pray for the man in the red car. Jesus. And that, didn't, that was not his theology. He didn't pray for dead folks. And, <laughs> I mean, he, here's, a, here's a man who uh, is a student of the Bible as a seminary education his theology didn't include praying for the dead but you know what he didn't worry about his theology that day God told him to pray Jesus. and he just did what God told him to do he, he climbed in the car with this body now he had been a medic in Vietnam so he was used to these kind of gruesome sights he cry, climbed in the car under a tarp they'd covered me up with so he's in the dark now even though it's broad daylight he is holding on to my shoulder this right arm is the only thing I didn't break in the uh, uh, automobile accident. Everything else was either broken or actually knocked off. He's holding onto my right arm and he's praying for me. And uh, he keeps praying for me. Now, I'm in heaven, so I'm not aware of this is happening. By this time, thousands of people are praying for me all over the country, all over the world, because they've been told I was in an awful accident. They're all praying. Ninety minutes after the accident happened, 90 minutes he's in the car and he's singing the great old hymn what a friend we have in Jesus and that hymn says oh what peace we often forfeit oh what needless pain we bear all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer he's holding on to my shoulder and without any warning 90 minutes after the big truck hit me suddenly 
I started singing that hymn with him under the tarp. Yeah. My God. My God. And you won't be surprised to hear that he got out of the car really fast. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he went over to the policeman in charge, and he said, the dead man is singing. <laughs> and they didn't, believe it. they didn't believe a word of it. Oh and uh, he finally convinced goodness. them to come at least check on me. They did, and discovered I was alive, but not very. They transported me to a hospital. I finally wound up there. I uh, spent uh, 13 months in a hospital bed and had 34 major operations. Um, they told me I would never walk again. They told me that I would never have function of my left arm again. They told me, because my head had been crushed by the, uh, the, by the roof uh, collapsing on it, and I had been impaled on the steering wheel, that I, I really didn't have any chance in a normal life at all. I'd sustained brain damage and internal injuries. And um, after 34 operations, uh, I walked up here tonight. When I'm finished, I'm walking out of here. Yes, you did. Yeah. I may not look like much, and I, I really don't feel like much most of the time, but I know that I am two things at least. I am an answered prayer for a lot of people, and I, I'm, I'm a result of miracles. I believe God's still in the miracle business. Wow. Wow. I really honestly believe the only reason I am here is because of other people pleaded, pleaded with God. They begged God. And I've asked many people across this country, and I, I, ask, I ask folks tonight, what would happen if we prayed for lost souls the way that preacher prayed over my dead body? Think about the souls that would be born in the kingdom of God as a result of that kind of prayer. Mm. I believe in bold praying, and I am an example of what happens when you do. And I also believe in miracles. Just incredible numbers of miracles had to happen. And people rejoice in that. They've read the book, and they... They say, wow, it's just amazing what God did in your life. But you know what? I, I need a miracle of a different kind. Or maybe my marriage is on the rocks. Or maybe some, my child is run away from home. Or I'm going through an addiction. Or I always say this to them. If God could resuscitate a dead guy in a red car, he can put your marriage back together again. I believe that. He, he can help you overcome that financial disaster that you've gone through. I mean, he's God. There's nothing he can't do. And so I, I just want to encourage people to believe and claim miracles because I, I'm only alive because of miracles. I, mm -hmm. I know that God works miracles, and everybody who knew me before the accident and since knows mm -hmm. that God's still in the miracle wow. business. Now, I'm sorry, I, I have a selfish motivation <laughs> to this, but tell me a little bit about where I'm going. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> because I have a home, oh. and I would just like to have a little bit of an... Anybody here like to have a little appetite? Yeah. yeah. What? Give us a little appetite. Well, you know, I didn't have a near-death experience. People talk about that sometimes. When you're dead for 90 minutes, you're not nearly yeah. dead. Yeah. Um, I was just there. I, I didn't go down. There was no tunnels for me. There was no bright light at the end. I mean, the moment that big truck hit me, I was standing at the gates of heaven, absent from the body and present with the Lord. It was an instantaneous thing. And I was surrounded by people I had known and loved in life that had gone before me. It was a blessed reunion of those saints. And one of the things that was remarkable about it for me was everybody that greeted me at the gates of heaven were people who helped me get there. Mm. They were people who took me to church. My parents didn't go to church when I was a child. If I went to church, the next door neighbor took me. My grandmother took me. Uh, those people who helped me get to church, they lived Christ in front of me. Their, their witness was to be faithful Christians, so I knew what one looked like. All the people who greeted me at the gates, one of my next door neighbors when I was 10 years old was at the gates of heaven, Miss Norris. Miss Norris kept foster kids in her house, mm. and she would come by in her station wagon and pick up us other kids in the neighborhood, because we didn't have any way to go to church if somebody didn't take us. Miss Norris was waiting for me at the gate. She helped me get there. Mm. All the people that were there at the gates were people who had had that kind of influence. So when I saw their faces, I knew where I was because I knew where they were. And it was a great, blessed, awesome reunion to be with these people. And you know what? They look really good. <laughs> yeah, they look really good. Yeah, I hear yeah. heaven has a pretty good oh, I'm telling you, makeover thing If you want to look good, heaven <laughs> is the place you want to be. <laughs> Woo! Everybody look good. Now, okay, I, I, look like like, I look like I fell in a hay baler from here down. <laughs> you know, I've had, they had to put this arm back on. It was in the back seat. 
and I wore external fixators, those big rods and wire things that go through you and turn screws four times a day. All the bones in this forearm came from my hip. All the skin on this arm came from my other leg. Uh, I lost four inches of femur, my left uh, leg. Uh, it was ejected out of the car in, off the bridge and no one ever found it. So this leg had to be surgically reattached. I wore a device of halos around it for a year as well. So I have all kinds of scars and staple marks and skin grafts. I didn't have a scratch on me in heaven. The only person in heaven with scars is Jesus, and that's to remind us of how we all got there. Everybody looks great in heaven. My great-grandmother had osteoporosis, and she walked with a severe slump. You can almost say she was hunched back. And she had lost her teeth at an early age. Mm. So I hardly ever saw her wearing her teeth. She didn't like her dentures very much. Mm -hmm. But when I saw her at the gates of heaven, she was standing upright. And then she smiled at me. And it was the most beautiful smile I've ever seen in my whole existence. She was just perfect. Everybody there is perfect. And they all look wonderful. They're just the way God wanted them to be when he created them in the first place. There's no age, no injuries, no scars, nothing to detract from the perfection of the, of the creation. So, you know, I, I, I know... Uh I know that there's a lot lost in translation, you know. Heaven is. is definitely another world. Yes. And it's another language. And, yes. and you're going to lose a lot of it in translation. It has its own language. But when you talk about seeing them uh, and no age, is it you, you know you are known as you are known? You just know. I often think about the disciples they saw in Moses yes. and Elijah. How'd they know? There wasn't photographs. How did they know? You know. Known? You, you know, know, I didn't have to be introduced to a single person. I yeah. knew exactly who they were. They knew who I was. Uh, we picked up right where we left off when I, I, I went to their funerals, I mean, or the day they died. So it was, um, it was a complete reunion of the people who had preceded me and the people who helped me get there. I, I often think, brother, about this. If we greet people at the gates of heaven, that's one of our responsibilities, and I believe that it is. That was my experience. Who are we going to greet? Why are we still here? Mm. I think it's to help as many people to get there as we can, and that's what this program is about. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've, we've had po folks here out here tonight, or today, talk about, we've talked about hell, and hell is just as real as heaven. I've talked to people who've been there in person, and um, I know that it is. And I, I, I've experienced that, and I've seen it.